an introduction to cell physiology. So what do we mean by cell physiology? This is simply a branch of biology that deals with the study of how a cell functions. Now cells carry out several functions that are necessary for the survival of an organism. But in order for them to carry out these functions, they require a variety of substances such as oxygen, water, nutrients such as glucose and so on. So they need to take in these materials from the surrounding environment. At the same time, they also need to remove waste products such as carbon four oxide. And the reason for this is because if these waste products are left to accumulate within the cell, what will happen is that they are going to turn poisonous, causing the cell to die. So what point am I making? I'm simply referring to the fact that there needs to be a continuous flow of materials in and out of the cell. Now, when it comes to movements of substances across the cell, this occurs through three physiological processes diffusion osmosis and active transport so in our lesson today i'm going to introduce these three physiological processes but before we do that i would like to inform you this cell physiology is a chapter that tends to be challenging for a lot of students and the reason for this is because this is a topic where examiners tend to focus a lot of their application questions from so you learn one thing and you get questions testing you whether you've understood the concept or not. Now, if you find that that is a challenge for you, be sure to check out these two videos of mine where I go through so many different questions, ensuring that when application questions come, they're not an issue for you. So let us start with our first physiological process and that is diffusion. So how do we define diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. As simple as that. Now, what do we mean by particles? Particles are simply the small molecules that make up gases, liquids, and solids. Now, when it comes to these three, only gases and liquids can diffuse from one point to another. Why, you may ask. Now, the reason for this is because molecules or particles of a gas or liquid tend to be in a set of constant random motion and can therefore diffuse from one point to another. However, when it comes to solids, the particles that make up a solid are held together in a rigid shape. Actually, that is the reason why solids tend to have a definite shape. So you're going to have particles held together tightly and can therefore not diffuse. Let us discuss one experiment that proves diffusion actually takes place. So this is where you're going to demonstrate diffusion using potassium manganate 7 crystals. Now this is a compound that has purple crystals. You're going to take a glass tube, use it to slowly introduce crystals of potassium manganate 7 to the bottom of a beaker that is full of water. Leave the beaker to stand for 5 minutes and then make your observations. So what you're going to observe after some time is that the water turns purple in color. So initially, of course, it was colorless, but it turns purple after a few minutes. How? How did this happen? Diffusion, of course. So the potassium manganate 7 particles were highly concentrated within the crystals. What did we say about diffusion? Particles are going to diffuse from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So the particles are going to break away from the crystals where they are at a higher concentration. They are then going to dissolve in water and diffuse throughout the water, turning the water an even purple color. And there we have it. Okay, let's move on to factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Number one is temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion. So what happens is that when you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy of the particles. Kinetic energy is the energy that is responsible for movement. So the more kinetic energy that particles have, the faster the rate of diffusion. So it causes the particles to move faster, therefore increasing the rate of diffusion. If you lower the temperature, you decrease the kinetic energy of the particles, therefore decreasing the rate of diffusion. By the way, when I talk about the rate of diffusion, I'm simply talking about how fast or how slow diffusion can take place. So by controlling these factors, you can either cause diffusion to occur faster or slower. 
The next one is concentration gradient. Concentration gradient is the difference in the number of molecules between two regions. So if you have two regions, for example, region A and region B, with the region A having more particles, while region B having less particles, you are going to have a concentration gradient because these two regions have a difference in the number of molecules. So the greater the difference, the faster the rate of diffusion. Let's do an example. Let's imagine we have the following. So we have region A and region B, and we also have region C and D. Are we having a concentration gradient in the first instance? Yes, because we clearly have a difference in the concentration gradient. What about in the second instance? Again, yes, we also have a concentration gradient. Why? Because the number of molecules present in C and D are different. But if you look at the difference, we have a higher concentration gradient in C and D as compared to A and B. Therefore, even though diffusion is going to take place in both cases, it's going to be faster in this case than in A and B. Moving on to the next one, the thickness of membranes. Now, I want to say this, diffusion can take place with or without a membrane. Now, in the case of living organisms, we have cells which are surrounded by cell walls and cell membrane. As such, in our bodies, you're going to have diffusion occurring across membranes. So if you have a membrane that is thicker, it's going to increase the distance across which the particles diffuse. So the larger the distance, the slower the rate of diffusion. But if you have membranes that are thinner, you're going to have a faster rate of diffusion. Next one, the size of molecules. Molecules that are small and light are going to diffuse faster than those that are larger and heavier. Surface area to volume ratio. The smaller the organism, the larger the surface area to volume ratio. The bigger the organism, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, let's put that into context by using an example. Let's imagine we have two animals, a mouse and an elephant. Of course, one is small, quite small, and the other is quite big. Now, which animal is going to have a larger surface area to volume ratio? Yes, it's actually the rat. Why? Because the rat is smaller and therefore it exposes a larger surface area to volume ratio. Now, such organisms tend to have a faster rate of diffusion. So you're going to have a faster rate of diffusion in the rat as compared to the elephant. So smaller organisms have a higher surface area to volume ratio than larger ones. Therefore, they have faster rates of diffusion. And on that point, I'm going to leave you with a question. Give me an example of an organ that is present in plants that has a large surface area to volume ratio and tell me the reason why.